Welcome to LearningEngineer.com, or we engineer learning for efficiency. Hi, I'm Michael Langdon, and today I'm going to show you how to get started with Sharp Develop 2.2. I've looked at quite a few multimedia authoring programs, and they're all pretty good except for one thing, and that is I need, generally I need them to make standalone executable files that anyone can run relatively easily. The problem with programs like PowerPoint, um, Flash, is that they all need an extra player to run, and that adds another layer of complexity to what I'm asking students to do. So, excuse me, um, what I'm going to do is quick show you how to get into Sharp Develop. I've already downloaded and installed it. Just Google uh, Sharp Develop and it should be the first one that comes up and you want to go to the download section and in the download section you want to download Sharp Develop 2.2 and that's all I download. I know there's several more links for other programs that you can download but I really haven't found it necessary to use them. So let's double click on Sharp Develop here. Okay, And since this is the first time I'm in here I'm going to click on a new solution and then you can see we can pick from here now there's a C sharp section and there's a VB net section um, I'm gonna stick with a straight C sharp app window application Windows application I'm gonna name it multi media and I'm going to have it create a directory uh, for my sources, for sources, and you can see that this is where it is. It's in my documents under Sharp Develop Projects, and this is the project name. And the nice thing about the create directory for sources is that um, anything that we are is necessary for our executable file to run, it will put in that cr that directory for sources, so that when we package it we can do it that way. So again as I was saying it's going to store everything into our directory. So I'm going to click create and as you can see here our form is coming up. There we go. Now it's fully loaded and what we're looking at here is a source code part which probably is very con confusing to you if you're a beginner. So if you come down here you'll see here it says source but there's also one here that says design and that's the one we want so let's click on that. And you can see here that we have uh, our form here and this is basically just like a web page or a I should say a Windows application form page and so you can see we can drag it out we can also come up to tools here and I believe what we want to see oh tools here we go so what we want is our tools okay and you can see we have all of our form our Windows forms here. So if we want to, um, let's see what's a common one here. Well, here's a here's a web browser. Okay, so if we take this and we drop it into here, you can see it fills up our entire form. And if we click on this, we should be able to come over here and see down here it says properties, and we can see the properties of our form. And so one of them you'll see says here it's called URL and that's where we would type the web address so I typed in uh, HTTP just like a regular web address learningengineer.com hit enter and what we'll do is we'll come up to here and we'll push the run compiled exe and you'll see that it will start our application. It takes a, li a little while for this to come up. So here it's going to come up.
Okay, and as you can see, basically, what happened here is we've made a little web browser. It's not great, but it does the job. And you can see we can scroll down through our web pages and we can click on stuff. Okay, so, so that's we've made our first little application here. And what we're going to do is in the next couple of lessons, we're going to go over adding components because we do need components for uh, integrating Flash and other media like QuickTime and uh, Windows Media Player. And we're going to add all of those. We can add these controls to here. We're just not going to do this this time. I just wanted to show you some of that. There's also some uh, data components. And there's also some other components as well. Um, that you can see here, image list, performance center, and so on. Now Windows Forms are the best ones and the ones that you'd be most interested in for, for developing multimedia are like uh, the picture box, a rich text box, a tab control. Uh, the nice thing about the tab control is you can put that in and then you can put uh, individual like slides like you would for PowerPoint in there. And, and again, it's just a matter of clicking on this one in here, oops, and then clicking over here. So where is our tab? Here it is. And if we click and we drag out here, you'll see that we get a nice little tab control. Okay. And we can click on the second one, click on the first one. And you can see if we add something to our first one so let's add a picture box okay we added a picture box and so if we click on tab 2 you'll see that that picture box is gone and so you could literally have just run your slide numbers across the top here like you would in PowerPoint and then add what cover pictures and audio you want to add here uh, it's that easy basically and so you get the idea I'm gonna quick save this so that we have it for our next lesson and uh, that's it for now